how much would you lose if you sold your house as is? Want to know the secret for selling your house at top dollar, given the current condition of your home? In this video, I'll break down the pros and cons of selling your home as is, and then also give you a secret formula that I've used for my clients in the past and how they got the most money out of their house. So stay tuned till the end. Hi everyone. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Jade. And if you are thinking about selling your house in the next 12 months and whether if you want to sell it quickly or if you've got a little time on your hands, I'm sure you're wondering if you should tackle those issues around your house that need a little TLC or could use a complete overhaul. First off, if you are going to go down that as is route, which technically all houses are as is, and you are not obligated to make any repairs, you're probably wondering what the upsides are. So I'm going to give you three pros of selling your house as is. Number one is convenience. Selling your home as is is pretty darn convenient. You get to skip the whole hassle of fixing it up either before putting it on the market or during escrow. And there's no back and forth haggling with repairs with potential buyers. You get to pass off scratch floors, outdated fixtures, stained walls, old kitchen cabinets, and other issues that you just want to pass off to the new buyer and be done with it. Basically you sell your house, hand over the keys and walk away. It's a little more complicated than that, but you get the idea. Now closely related to convenience is pro number two, which is you save time. If you're not going to make the time consuming home improvements and repairs, it'll be quicker to put your house on the market and get it listed. And there could be a number of reasons why you'd want to list it quick. Maybe you're under financial distress, possible foreclosure, or if there's been a divorce or there is medical issues in your family or just generally that you have to deal with. So selling as is can be a good option for those who want to sell it fast. Pro reason number three for selling your home as is, is you get out of avoiding out of pocket costs. Selling as is can be a practical choice for those that can't afford it. By not making any repairs or improvements to the house before listing your home or during escrow, you don't have to pay for these repairs upfront. And this can be beneficial for those that don't have the disposable funds, which can add up to thousands of dollars, depending on the things that you want to do, especially if your house is a fixer upper. And to share a quick story with you, I had a seller that was living in Arizona and her dad came to live with her for the last six months. And he moved in with her due to health reasons. And within six months, he sadly passed away. So now she had a house in San Diego that hadn't been lived in for the last six months and she wanted to sell quick. So this house hadn't been lived in for the last six months. It definitely had seen better days. There was a bunch of repairs that needed to be done and she wasn't in the right situation to either tackle these issues or put the money up front to repair all the problems with the house. So selling as is for her definitely made sense. It was a lot quicker. She didn't have to deal with the hassle of making repairs and she didn't want to fund any repairs up front. Okay, real quick, if you find any value in this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you're thinking about selling in the next 12 months, you can book appointment with me. The details are in the description below. And then we can have a quick chat about your specific situation and a strategy that works best for you. Okay, back to the video. So I've given you the good, now here's the bad. Here are five cons of selling your home as is. Number one on the list, no surprise, is lowball offers. You are gonna get lowball offers, possibly 10 to 15% below market rate. So in San Diego, with a home price of 800,000, depending on the condition of your house, if it's in a rough shape and needs a lot of work to expect to sell it between say 650 and 720,000. Of course, that all depends on how much work needs to be done. And if it's not that much, and it's just like a little bit outdated, then maybe knock off around 5% off market value. Remember, if you'd like to find out how much your house is worth, reach out to me. I promise I won't bite. Number two on the list of cons is WWWTH. That is what's wrong with the house. Buyers are going to be wondering what's wrong with the house. Why is the seller selling as is and doesn't want to make 
any repairs. They're going to have this question in their head. And before they even come out to see their house, they're going to be thinking about this. And this might kind of make them second guess whether they want to come out to your house. So this would reduce the number of buyers that are coming and taking a look. And obviously, without buyers coming to take a look, there is a pretty slim chance that you're going to get an offer. So you definitely want as many buyers as you can. And naturally, this moves on to con number three, which is fewer buyers. You're just going to get fewer buyers that are going to want to take a look at your house if you're labeling your house as is. They don't want to deal with the headache of making repairs, and they don't want to deal with the headache of unknown costs of how much it is going to cost to repair your house. Having a home labeled as is is going to turn away a lot of buyers. On the flip side of that, you are going to get a lot more inquiries from investment buyers and flippers. They are obviously going to want to buy low, fix up the house, turn a profit, and sell high. Now moving on to con number four is disclose, disclose, disclose. When you put up that red flag on your house saying as is, you are conveying to your buyer there's something wrong with the house and you don't want to fix it which naturally leads to sellers having to disclose before even getting offers to buyers because buyers are going to want to know upfront what's wrong with the house. And this obviously could lead to less buyers. And lastly, number five on the list of cons selling your home as is, is loan type restrictions. Some loans such as VA or FHA loans have health and safety requirements that are a lot more restrictive than say a conventional loan. If a property doesn't meet these requirements and a buyer is planning on using an FHA or a VA loan, they won't be eligible and they won't be able to put an offer on your home. So again, this is reducing the amount of offers that you could potentially get. Now, if you still want to go through your the as-is route, for whatever reason, the secret formula for selling your home as-is and getting top dollar First step one is to get a comparative market analysis on your specific area and compare homes on the market with the same condition and features, say same number of bedrooms, same number of bathrooms, similar square feet, and similar condition to your home. And then if you had all the repairs that you wanted to do, what would be the price? So you can come up with a ballpark figure. If you need help with this, just reach out to your local real estate agent they can definitely help you with this. And once you have this ballpark number, then you go, step number two would be to list out all the repairs that you wanna do and how much they're gonna cost. Now be specific. Buyer or flipper or investment buyer is gonna know generally how much each repair is gonna cost, how much it's gonna tally up to, and they're gonna take it off a market rate. Going back to the home that I listed before that was a fixer, I presented the seller cost estimate of all the repairs, if they were to be done, how much it would cost. And first off, we had to get a home inspection so we know what we're dealing with. And the home inspection and all the recommended repairs actually came out to $27,000. They needed termite treatment, which came to $5,000. And then there was the HVAC system that wasn't working was $13,000 and new ductwork, cost of permit, scraping the popcorn ceilings, smoothing out the plaster, upgrading the electronics, the light fixtures, the fans for new flooring, updating the bathrooms in both the primary bathroom and the main bathroom and also remodeling the kitchen. Smiths on all of these costs and it came out to $106,000. So it was a lot. And for fair market value for this house in good condition was about 700,000. Now this house had needed a lot of work and which totaled to 100,000. So we took that off the 700,000 and ended up pricing the house for 599. I wasn't sure how much interest there would be given that this was a true fixer upper. There were a lot of buyers that came in and even said that the house needed $150,000 worth of repairs. However, because we priced this house fairly and all the buyers in the market knew that, because a house like the one that we had in good condition would have sold for $700,000 to $750,000. So they knew that $599,000 was a fair market price. 
So want to know how many offers we got? We got 20 offers. So this was earlier this year in January when the market was still pretty slow. And, you know, going back to con number one, we did get a lot of lowball offers. 80% were probably less than 575,000. So most of them were on the low side. There was 20% that probably came in around list price, a little bit above, a little bit below. And then because we priced the house fairly and a lot of buyers came to see the house, we had a couple buyers that just absolutely loved the house and the winning bid ended up putting in an offer for 50 grand more and we sold it for $650,000. So this buyer was fully aware of all the bumps and bruises that this house had and she was ready to take on the challenge. So the moral of the story is price your house fairly and you might be pleasantly surprised and rewarded. So thank you for staying till the end. And if you like this video, please check out this other video here.